Hello everyone and welcome to another really fun game from the US Chess Championship 2021. Uh, we've, we're gonna skip round 9 as round 9 was uh, all draws and nothing really happened or affected the standing so it was uh, pretty much a snooze fest but here uh, a wonderful game from round 8 the round that we already covered but it's John Burke uh, versus Wesley So and it's um, basically a story about uh, how uh, one person uh, prepared something special for the other one, but then instead of bringing surprises, uh, he was uh, surprised himself. Well, you're going to see what I mean by this. Uh, so let's uh, just check it out. So uh, Burke with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have e5 by Wesley, knight to f3, knight to c6, and John goes for bishop to b5, the uh, Rui Lopez. We have knight to f6 going for the Berlin defense, d3, and the bishop to c5. We have c3, and the both players castle so this is all very standard many many games in this exact same line um uh, we have rook uh, sorry castles we have rook to e8 by black uh, and now uh, knight b to d2 uh, we have a6 chasing away the bishop and the bishop to a4 now and this is um we've been covering a lot of lines in the berlin defense and we, uh, especially this uh, d3 bishop to c5 line uh, and it's a position that occurs very often and this position also uh, occurred um, uh, many times the b5 is the most common move played here uh, levon aronian played it against uh, temor rajabov uh, almasi played it against maxim varshila uh, so many top grandmasters also enjoyed this exact same position but here we have d5 by Wesley so trying to uh, catch um, uh, Burke off guard and it's uh, also a very tricky line so what do you play here uh, it, the position was reached in a very top tier game in 2016 in the grand chess tour between uh, Vishwanathan Anand and Hikaru Nakamura uh, where Anand continued with queen to e2 uh, e just getting the queen away from the d file and putting more uh, defense to the to the pawn here uh, but uh, here we don't have this here in this game we have the immediate d4 so this is um uh, what uh, what uh, Burke played uh, and it is now uh, only as of move nine that we have a completely new game uh, so let's see how Wesley deals with this with e captures on d4 c captures on d4 and now uh, now is the uh, well a wonderful moment in the game uh, where Wesley played bishop to a7 but uh, you could try something else uh, the problem is you can't go after the pawn uh, because your knight is pinned the bishop here is just uh, in the way but what you could do is play b5 and now you are threatening to win the pawn if the bishop moves we're just gonna win this pawn for free so here d captures on c5 is kind of forced to b captures on a4 and if e captures on d5 we're gonna capture here and if queen captures on a4 uh, we can develop the bishop and black uh, really has no no worries here uh, but perhaps the wesley uh, this is um maybe trading down a, a little bit uh, too much too too soon so he wants to keep uh, all the chances uh, alive for uh, for quite some time so bishop back to a7 and now e5 challenging this knight knight to e4 and now bishop captures on c6 b captures on c6 doubling wesley c pawn and since the knight is already attacked twice uh, uh once uh, we're going to attack it twice and white's next move uh, seems uh, only natural white plays queen to c2 puts pressure on the knight puts pressure on the c6 pawn uh, but this is uh, exactly the move that allows wesley to um, uh, just take complete control of the game uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea that Wesley played while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding such a beautiful active move. And uh, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, bishop to f5. Uh, now, bishop to f5 uh, developing a piece uh, that's already, uh, you know, uh, good enough in itself. But you are x-raying this queen on c2. And not only that, you are threatening ideas like knight. Whoops. <laughs> you are threatening ideas like knight to g3, opening up a discovery on the queen and also on the rook here. The knight also will be defending the bishop. So white has to do something about this. Uh, you could capture here. Of course, that's possible. For example, if knight captures, bishop captures, we attack the queen. Now the queen uh, can move or go after this c6 pawn. So this is definitely possible. But in the game, uh, Burke played queen captures on c6 right away. And now he allows Wesley to just continue mounting pressure. We have rook to e6 pushing the queen back queen to a4 and now c5 getting rid of this um 
uh, backward c pawn uh, attacking white center because white has a beautiful d4 uh, and d5 pawn chain here you could also consider rook to g6 it's uh, it's a wonderful move because um, it's very hard for white to unwind here the queen is all all the way on the queen side not helping out with the defense uh, you can't really capture here because we're going to capture with the pawn and then this knight has to move regarding the d squares with the queen so uh, black will definitely be better here but wesley decides for c5 it's important to eliminate white's strong center so d captures on c5 knight captures attacking the queen and queen to f4 now putting pressure on the bishop uh, and now comes bishop to d3 another beautiful move by wesley attacking white's rook here and the problem is if you move the rook then we play bishop c2 now we're threatening knight to d3 attacking the rook and the queen and here uh, it's very very hard to, to find the decent moves for white if you go for the counter attack uh, with uh, knight to g5 we can simply block knight to d3 is still coming and if queen h4 uh, trying to say okay if knight to d3 then the bishop no longer guards the h7 pawn we can simply move the bishop back we don't really need it here so you've avoided the knight to d3 uh, trap but uh, still uh, black's position is definitely to be preferred here this bishop is a monster this bishop is an even greater monster you have a beautiful pass the deep on that's protected the knight is uh, ready to, to go anywhere so it's a it's a really fine position for black so uh that's not what burke played burke went for the move that you always have to look for when you're playing with the white piece and that of course is pawn to b4 now he's trying to sacrifice the exchange here and should wesley accept this then he's gonna play b captures on c5 and get a beautiful pass pawn here Wesley has to tend to the bishop and after the bishop moves we're going to play knight b3 defend our pawn here develop our bishop then put a rook on c1 uh, and we're going to have a nice protected uh, pass pawn as well uh that's already well fairly far advanced uh so after b4 Wesley goes for knight to e4 uh he could go for for capturing the rook but it's just um uh he he has something better planned uh for the moment you can't move the rook because then the f2 pawn falls the knight is now making sure of this so other than capturing uh the knight here it's um well there's really nothing better so knight captures on e4 we have d captures on e4 attacking the uh the knight here knight to g5 now attacking f7 and the rook on e6 so wesley has to defend with rook to e7 and now bishop to b2 uh, putting the bishop to this beautiful diagonal at some point even e6 might be played uh, trying to open up uh, the diagonal for the bishop to come alive uh, but now wesley does it uh, uh, does it sooner now you could go just go for the rook rook captures and f1 there's nothing wrong with that i mean who amongst us would not go for the rook here uh, but wesley plays e3 here and this is um, just just showing pure class uh, he's saying now okay you can't capture with the queen my bishop is defending this uh, you have to capture with this pawn and i'm gonna ruin your pawn structure and then have a lot of very interesting tactics here plus i'm also going to capture the rook on the next move so f captures on e3 there's nothing better here f ca uh, bishop captures on f1 rook captures on f1 and now queen to d3 uh you can't go for f6 right away it seems like a great idea for example pawn captures bishop captures with check picks up the queen the problem is queen c4 check and then we capture on f6 and black doesn't really have anything here so after rook captures on f1 we have queen to d3 now threatening bishop Bishop captures on e3 to win the queen and now bishop to d4 so challenging the bishop here not allowing bishop captures on e3 uh wesley trades here we have d captures now white also has a very strong pawn center again and rook to d8 now but still uh wesley's up the exchange and that uh, pawn uh, chain in the center will not be advancing forward anytime soon so knight to f3 adding a defender to the d4 pawn just queen c3 wesley says there is nothing for you on the king's side there's nothing for you in the center i'm just gonna go gobble up these queen side pawns uh, and that's enough for me to win the game and now uh here a3 is actually a very interesting move it seems like you're guarding this pawn uh, and trying to give up uh, this pawn but if of course the queen captures on a3 uh, then uh, you have some very interesting knight to h4 to f5 ideas and then it could get uh, well it could get very very ugly uh you know it's uh, very complicated white has this uh, also the knight now joins the attack so wesley doesn't want to allow this um uh, uh sorry uh so so uh, a3 was an interesting option here uh but white missed it and white played h4 uh, he wants to start the attack uh, as soon as possible because he thinks he's out of um out of options but a3 was very very interesting here so here queen captures some b4 wesley just grabs the pawn h5 now now h6 wesley stops the advancement and now even g4 and this is now 
going all out either it works or it doesn't uh, and now we have rook to b7 by wesley uh, interestingly here f6 was a viable option uh, because now after e captures an f6 and there's really nothing better uh, we're just going to play rook to f7 and we just opened up the f file for our rooks to uh, you know wreak havoc on so after queen uh, e3 let's say rook captures here you can bring the other rook here you can bring the queen wherever and it's just a very very strong position for black so after g4 Wesley decided to go the other way around he played rook to b7 now queen e4 centralizing the queen uh, and also maybe hoping to start advancing those pawns at some point but rook to b6 now uh, you have to be careful if the queen moves that rook could become a target but also we're just stopping this pawn from uh, going to e6 so queen to c2 uh, this move uh, I really don't understand uh, probably the idea is to move the queen away uh, from from the fourth rank so we can maybe play rook to d1 and start advancing that pawn one, uh, at one time uh, but it's still uh, probably that so Wesley just continues rook d to b8 triples up on the b file rook to d1 and now queen to a3 the simplest way to go uh the rook is now coming to b2 and there is not a lot white white can do here so rook d3 attacking the queen but still rook to b2 offering a queen trade and now the problem is if you try to avoid the queen trade queen captures here and you're just uh, uh dead lost here and also if you move the queen to somewhere like c4 we're also just going to capture offer a queen trade and the rook to g2 is, is, is a very strong move then the other rook can come to b1 or this rook can come to b1 right away uh, all depends on what uh, white plays uh, but after rook to b2 we had the simple rook captures on a3 uh queen trade occurred wesley played a uh, rook captures on c2 and it was uh, in this position on move 34 that John M. Burke resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. He's down material. Okay, he's up a pawn, but uh, he cannot uh, grab an a6. And other than that, there is really nothing you can do. The, the two rooks are simply too strong. Rook to b1 is the threat of checkmate. Uh, so you can't even go for the a6 pawn. And it would be uh, just extremely pointless continuing this for example if king f1 trying to avoid mate so you can block with knight e1 we're still just going to play this and after knight to e1 we can now play really anything rook h2 again or threatens checkmate so it's just a very ugly position to play uh imp an impossible one uh, so yeah, after Rook captures on C2, he resigned, uh, and it was uh, very, very interesting. So who uh, who, who out-prepared who he uh, here? Uh, because uh, Burke seems to have uh, played a, a very nice line, and he uh, found the line that, uh, you know, he, he might be able to take on Wesley with the white pieces, but then, uh, you know, as soon as they uh, went out of the, the, the known territory, uh, this simple, simple position that, uh, I mean, it's such a simple position that everyone would play this, queen to c2, it's so normal to, to, to play something like this, uh, but it just shows you how dangerous it is to go for, for a poison pawn, even if you don't know it, if it's poisoned, you know, maybe, maybe just avoid going for the pawn altogether. Uh, as this is classical chess, Wesley would not allow this if it was you know playable uh but yeah uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, in the lead as yesterday, since all of the uh, rounds, uh, games from round 9 were drawn, uh, it's uh, Wesley, Lenderman, and Sevian are leading the tournament, uh, and we'll see uh, who, who, who who will it be after round 10. I think uh, Ray Robson and... Um, uh, who, 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 who's tied with him? Uh, I think Robson and Dominguez, and then it's uh, Fabi who's trailing by a full point behind the leaders. But we're going to uh, show the standings at some point. That is a promise. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Tom Derolo, You'll Never Walk Alone, uh, HB, Mr. Hoodie Guy, and Micah Kennedy for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the US Chess Championship, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Friday.